Welcome to Executives at the Edge, a podcast brought to you by MEF. I'm your host, Pascal Menezes. Join me as we explore thought-provoking perspectives from the leaders and change makers who are propelling enterprise digital transformation forward. I am really so excited to have Zukifli Ahmed, Senior Director from Singtel Enterprise, talk about their unified network as a service. I think you'll find this episode really interesting of how big Singtel really is and how they've unified network as a service globally and delivering that globally to old enterprises. So with that, Zukipli, welcome to Executives at the Edge. Maybe for our audience, you can just talk a little bit about yourself, your background, and maybe a little bit about uh, what Singtel is doing and we can get right into this episode. Hey, hi, thank you, Pascal, for having me here today. My name is Zukifli Ahmad. I'm a Senior Director in Singtel Enterprise. I have been in Singtel for most of my career, actually. So Singtel, we, we are an Asia-leading and industry-recognized Infocom leader with extended cloud and partner ecosystem. Um, we have proven track record in partnering our enterprises and public sector and customers, supporting them in their network transformation journey and managing high-performance enterprise network. And that includes essentially the whole ecosystem of software-defined networking, whether is it from the LAN, SESI, and even the cloud access and wireless 5G connectivity. So that kind of give you a pretty quick sum up in terms of uh, what Singtel is and what I'm doing in Singtel. A lot of our audience doesn't really know Singtel. Can you tell uh, us a little bit about your coverage? Like where are you located? I know you think of Singtel being Singapore, but you're much more than just located in Singapore. I'm sure it's a headquarters, but you probably have a right. very global coverage. Can you kind of just elaborate for our audience before we get into pretty, this episode? Pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. Yes. Okay. We, we, our presence, I mean, our high performance infrastructure, I mean, we have over 420 pre point of presence on a global basis, 362 cities. And it's, it's not just about being present in those locations in terms of, because when you look at software defined network, it's the whole ecosystem in terms of providing access, providing cloud connectivity. So we have over cloud, uh, 30 over cloud access gateways and, and global internet covering over 200 countries. So that allows us actually to stitch, to actually provision the service end to end on a global context. No doubt, I mean, the focus has always been Asia Asia being very fragmented in terms of, you know, even when we talk about a global internet service in Asia itself, I mean, the scheme differs from country to country, but but what, what network as service brings together on the table is a holistic uh, and more, and, and with our functions and capabilities that we offer, like uh, the application aware of thing, we allow customers to leverage on cost-effective uh, transport like internet, at the same time, we allow deterministic routing, whether is it to the cloud, whether is it to the branch, uh, that, that is via the NAS service. So, Zekifli, you know, we just launched our network as a service in mm -hmm. October with our biggest uh, event called the Global NAS event. And, you know, the NAS has really become a big hot topic. And you have this idea of unified NAS. So, what exactly is unified network service and why are they essential in this modern digital age? Right, Pascal. So this unified network service is uh, an integrated approach to networking. I mean, where various network functions, whether is it routing, security, and even network optimization are consolidated into a single platform. And with the unified NAS, uh, it allows organization to access uh, networking resources on demand, case in point, bandwidth, routing, and even security as a subscription basis. So what this means for companies is that they can definitely scale their network up and down according to their needs, which is a significant departure in terms of how traditional network models uh, run currently. And, and this is essential because it simplifies the whole network management. It improves efficiency as what I've described earlier, and it definitely augments and, and enhances the overall user experience. We are in MEF defining network as a service of underlays, connectivity, on-demand, which you just described, mm -hmm. overlays with SD-WAN and of slicing with 5G. And then we have overlays of further with cybersecurity, SASE, 
SSE, ZTNA, and then edge compute and multi-cloud and all of that we bundle with automation. Um, so can you kind of like help us understand like what exactly are the advantages that, you know, this kind of unified network services kind of brings to organizations and some of the key benefits of NAS? Okay. Right. Okay. The, the, the key benefit would, would, would definitely be, I think as what you have described, Pascal, I think is some of the key features that you have described is to simplify connectivity and network management. I think the whole idea of being agile and flexible, uh, just, just imagine having a single access that allows you to connect securely to multiple cloud and data centers, uh, being robust and, and flexible in, in the infrastructure. And the other bit, of course, with this whole connectivity and the centralized management, it empowers customer to actually uh, you know, uh, work things uh, or, or, or orchestrate some of these functions and capability on demand via secure intuitive portal. And beyond that, I think if we were to look from a cost efficiency perspective, uh, it does reduce the cost by aggregating multiple cloud connectivity. It also improves uh, total cost of, of ownership with on-demand provisioning and usage-based charging model. And, and, and with that, I mean, you know, uh, those costs, when we talk about, you know, secure space, power, cross-connect, that could actually be eliminated with, with this NAS setup that I have just described. So really, is Singtel now offering this like today? Is it available in the, to the customer base around the world or only in, you know, certain parts of Asia or is it uh, available today? It, it, it is available. Uh, in, a, in a global basis in terms of how we are offering network as a service. Um, and, and there are many applications uh, which is not limited to specific uh, industry. And so, so, for example, you know, do you deliver today all that underlay connectivity fully automated end-to-end -end across a global ecosystem of partners? You, do you offer SD-WAN today? Do you offer cybersecurity SASE, for example? It's really odd. Is, all, is that all part of your unified network service or network as a service? Yes, this is part of the network service. Maybe, maybe I'll just provide a, a little bit more elaboration. I mean, uh, one of the use case perhaps in terms of how we have delivered the service and I, I, I'm working with a, one of the engagement with one of the enterprise who's embracing or, and embarking on their digital transformation journey. So they are looking at software defining their wide area network uh, leveraging on the internet as a WAN transport. I think moving away from the traditional MPLS infrastructure and they are deploying multi-cloud connectivity and not just in Asia on a global basis. And at the same time, they are actually maintaining their data center connectivity. So what this network as a service scheme that we offer, I mean, what it does is it stitches all these network elements that I have described into a single ecosystem such that it empowers and even allows customer to orchestrate uh, the services end-to-end. -end. So it's an end-to-end -end provision. So in that particular customer itself, what they are doing, they are doing an upgrade of a cloud access from a gig to 10 gig access, and that could be orchestrated via the digital portal that we empower them. And at the same time, it also allows us to look at the edge where, you know, at, at the offices and the corporate offices, whether similar upgrade is required on the internet access at the edge. So that can be orchestrated uh, seamlessly as well. And with the Nest service that Singtel offers, we also allow customer, I mean, we have this concept, what I call the application aware routing. So at all times, it allows, you know, optimal branch to cloud performance so that, you know, when we talk about latency over the internet, it becomes more predictable and optimized pathway to cloud. So this is the scheme that, that we have currently, which empowers customers to actually manage their own uh, network as a service. So, so are you really saying that customers want to use the internet as their first mile, maybe multiple loops, run SD-WAN on top of it, or even with slicing with 5G, and then they hit your nearest pop, and from there they get all your services and clouds, multi-clouds, and edge compute. Is that kind Indeed. of what you're saying? Indeed, correct. So yes, so we it is a whole end-to-end uh, -end scheme. One is definitely leveraging on internet being the preferred mode of transport. 
And in Asia, I mean, internet can be as fragmented and, and, and you know, uh, the, the scheme differs. So I think it is important as a network as a service provider, we, we ensure connections is more predictable in terms of latency, not only to the cloud, even to the hub, to the data centers. So we have to ensure that that, that, that provision is done on a seamless fashion. And at the same time as well, they are able to uh, orchestrate the provision on demand. Yeah. So what are, you know, with this technology, mm -hmm. what are the challenges and considerations? I can imagine their business challenges too. For example, they're not owning the capital anymore, right? It's all as right, a right. service. Yeah. So it was subscription or usage or both. And there must be challenges because they're not really responsible for the technology upgrades too. So, but there are challenges also from your end and considerations and what should organizers be aware of when implementing this kind of unified NAS solution? Right. Because unified NAS brings a lot of elements inside network elements. I mean, from the when, from the cloud access, from transport and, and even security. And a, a careful design and planning is definitely required. And it is important, I mean, through my experience in engagement of these enterprises, it is important that this enterprise takes the security by design approach, I mean, from inception to deployment, I think we have to look at it and end-to-end an -end service. And of course, I, I think uh, with the use of internet and all, I think compliance with industry regulation is also crucial. So uh, further to that, I, I, what the other element would be, I think understanding the cost model and the potential hidden cost is essential to avoid surprises. So these are some of the key elements that, that, that I, I think it's important uh, when, and, and possibly challenges and consideration that customer has to consider when they are looking at unified NAS uh, service. So, so uh, you know, one of the things I'm always thinking about is mm -hmm. how does the customer perceive NAS in a way that you as a provider have to be responsible for the technology refresh and you have to supply all that refresh and yet mm -hmm. it's a subscription model and they really don't by definition sign a contract more than a short term conditionally years or commercially do they still do that they sign large contracts as a monthly basis or monthly and usage basis i was always wondering how you know service providers deliver as like the hyperscalers but still manage to you know deliver that in a cost efficient model do you have right. any thoughts on that yeah, imagine in a traditional environment, I mean, when when you do a simple upgrade, case in point, an internet bandwidth from a 10 meg to say 100 meg on, 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 in, a, in a corporate office itself, what it requires is possibly a truck roll to actually provision a new router, for example, to support such bandwidth upgrades. And, uh, and and subsequently, the whole provision could take essentially about a week or so to provision a service end-to-end to get a service provider to upgrade the internet bandwidth uh, to, to, to the expectation of the customer. But with NAS as a service, how Singtel has orchestrated this whole concept of NAS, one, at the age itself, uh, we, 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 we do still provide internet routers on, on customer premise, but in a virtualized form. So the universal CPE setup itself allows customer to you know, do a virtual upgrade uh, setup uh, on, right. on demand without any truck roll. It simplifies the whole provision. And I have seen uh, where provisions and upgrades when required and on demand basis, it shortens the whole provision from a week to probably about less than about 30 minutes we, we can provide an upgrade of the internet bandwidth. And we don't stop there because end of the day, when we look at bandwidth upgrade, it also requires a subsequent upgrade, probably in terms of their cloud connectivity, in terms of their cloud access to Azure or AWS. And that can be provisioned because the cloud access being software defined, again, I think the whole provision, uh, customers or even Singtel, they are empowered to actually uh, facilitate that upgrade end-to-end. Uh, -end. So we, we, we really stitch the whole provision from the edge, the routers, the bandwidth at the customer premise itself, and even the cloud access, uh, orchestrated through the portal that 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 we offer with our network as a service. Got it. So Zukipli, you know, tell us more about what the future holds 
for Unified NAS. And there are some exciting trends or development on the horizon. Can you help our listeners on this? We, yeah. I mean, we, we definitely expect Unified Network as a service to continue to evolve. I think uh, the integration of AI, ML into the network optimization is, is going to be a hot trend and which we have to embrace. That's one. And I think the prolifer proliferation of 5G and edge computing will further drive Unified Network as a service adoption, especially when we look at customers you know, embracing the IoT application. I think that, that will be crucial. And... Uh, a well thought out approach and collaboration, I think, with experienced providers will be key. I mean, to realize all this full potential of Unified Network as a service. Well, that's actually true. And I think, as you talked about, everything's going to be delivered from the edge. Edge, co edge computing is massively coming in everywhere mm -hmm. uh, for low Correct. latency applications. And I think everything for NAS will be delivered from that edge. Now, automation is very critical, right? We never really talked about that, but the ability to have that cloud like experience and be able to turn up and down resources on demand is really critical. Not just network resources, but you know, cloud resources and all cloud that. Resources as well. Yep. Yeah. So, any final thoughts? You know, before we wrap up, we're at the very end here. Um, any thoughts about you know for advice for our listeners who are considering kind of NAS or unified NAS for their organizations? Uh, it's all about planning, and I will encourage, I think, organizations uh, to carefully evaluate their specific needs and work with experienced service providers. Uh, unified network service can definitely be a powerful tool, but the right strategy and in terms of how we implement it, and especially while 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 we we focus on global, I mean, definitely, I mean, Asia being as I've described being fragmented in terms of how things run from one country to the other, it's important that that we work with the right partner. And this will be key to reap the whole, the full benefits of Network as a Service. Well, Zuke Philippe, thank you so much for your time. It has been a complete pleasure listening to Singtel's um, NAS offering, which is Unified NAS. And I really, really thank you for your time. And I'm sure the listeners are really, really, really excited about all of this new technology, new services from Singtel and how the world is transforming very rapidly. Indeed. So with and that, thank you. Thank you. And thanks, Pascal, once again for having me here today. Thanks for joining us for Executives at the Edge. Don't miss an episode. Subscribe today. Share online a review. Find all our episodes on your favorite podcast platform and at left.net.